Hello Ace, this is Retro TK2 and today we're back making our Pokemon ROM hack. Now today I want to go away from advanced map and I want to work on our build process. So up until this point we've basically just been launching Visual Boy Advance and going into file and open and then just running our game straight from there. Nothing too special there Ace. Now ideally you'd want to set up maybe some save states so that we could just load straight into the game. But for now we're going to just look at basically launching Visual Boy Advance and having our hacked version of the ROM loaded in separately. And I want to do that all with the click of a button. And I want to do it using Unity. Now up until this point, we've been doing a lot of really basic stuff with Unity and trying to learn C Sharp. But this, in this video, I'm going to be covering a lot more advanced topics, I must admit. So uh, I'm going to also be going, I'm going to be going into the Unity uh, editor windows. And I'm also going to be using Unity's GUI stuff as well. All this stuff, I'm really just going to do a really shallow overview of it, Ace. Like, I'm really not going to touch upon it at all. Just because the main focus of this series, I really want it to be on the Pokemon side of things. But, I also want to kind of think, I think it can double up quite nicely with the uh, Unity stuff that we've been doing previously as well. So, whenever I actually finally get the C Sharp stuff done and completed, you'll be able to come back to this and sort of understand exactly what's going on. But, We'll press on uh, just because, I mean, really, the build process that we currently had was just, yeah, it's not, it's not good enough. Let's put it that way. In this video, we'll also be using Unity Spice for all our logging ace and any sort of string manipulation that we need to do. Uh, if you want to get it yourself, uh, just click on the link in the description and follow the on-screen instructions to download it for free. Dead on, brilliant. Okay, so let's get stuck in and create our editor window. So in order to do anything in Unity with the editor side of things, you need to put everything inside this editor folder. And then we also want to do this as the, I'll do this as Pokemon editor window. Yeah, that'll do for now. Oops, that'll definitely do for now. And then we want to go and double click on it to bring up Visual Studio. Okay, so for this we won't need any of the start or updates functions and we will need to type in a static void method called launch. And we're also going to have to change it so that it inherits from the editor window class. Go to import and everything should be perfectly cool there. Yes, okay, brilliant. So what we want to do as well is set this up as a menu item. So basically what a menu item is, is so with here, we want to set it up probably below window maybe. So we want to put it below window and we want it to you know, pretty much just be around here somewhere. Anywhere around here would be perfect. Uh, so we will just select here and it will be our Pokemon editor window. Um, I, did, I mean, other ways we could do it, I suppose, is maybe create our own separate, actually, we'll create our own separate menu for it. And the way that you do that is using something in Unity C, or in C Sharp called attributes. And the attribute we're using is called menu item. You can see it's actually came up for us. Here it is. And it has a number of parameters as well. This is very like a, a method, but we haven't really touched upon, uh, we haven't touched upon attributes at all in C sharp. So for this moment, just, you know, <laughs> let's say just, just bear it is and uh, we'll just carry on with this. So the item name here is actually the path to our editor. So we want to have something like Pokemon, Pokemon ROM, we'll call it that. And then we want to put in our forward slash. And then we want to put in I don't know, editor window? Nah, it's a little bit silly. Well, we'll say launcher then. Yeah, that'll do. So we'll put in launcher, and then there's another couple of things I want to do here as well. It's a validate function. It's not a validate function. It's priority, I suppose we'll just put it zero. So it'll probably be more towards the top. The menu item itself. Okay, we'll try that for a moment. Yes, just want to make sure that it actually all works wait for it to finish loading and as you can see we've got Pokemon ROM and launcher right there now if I click on it it doesn't do it a thing but if we go down here and type in our var type in a window we can actually 
launch the window. So if we do editor window, I believe it is, dot get window. Yeah, perfect. And we want to get the window Pokemon editor window. And then we want to put in a couple of parameters here as well. So is it a utility? Yes, I want it to be a utility window, which basically means that it won't be docked um, beside any of the Unity ones. It'll be its own separate window. And I want to call this Pokemon Launch, although it might not even fit on the actual window. So let's go back in and see if this works. Pokemon ROM, type in Launcher. Yep, maybe I need to wait for it to compile a wee bit more. Pokemon ROM, Launcher. Hey, hey, there we are. Yeah, so now you can see that we've got an actual window, which is perfect. So what I want to have here is probably like a play button. And to do that there in the Unity ecosystem, we've got to use a method called onGUI. And for this here, I'm going to also use, there's a ton of editor stuff and, well, there's a ton of stuff. I mean, I could spend an entire video talking about the Unity GUI stuff. There's the GUI, Editor GUI, there's Editor GUI Layout, then there's also just GUI, and then there's GUI Layout, but both of them are quite similar. The Editor GUI gives you a lot more functionality with it, but the GUI is sort of meant to be used in your games. The one we're going to use is just the Editor GUI Layout, and the reason why we're going to use this one and not the Editor GUI is that this will sort of automatically try and place our buttons on the screen without having to actually put in set points. Honestly, is don't worry too much about it. It should be okay. I actually don't even think I can use, there's no button class on the editor GUI, which is a bit of a shame. So we'll just use the GUI layout and we'll just, yeah, simply a button. So the GUI content we want to use is just a simple string, type in play ROM. And yeah, and this will return a bool. So we want to put that inside a nice big if statement. And we will also just log out just to make sure that this actually worked. Whenever we've actually clicked the thing. So if we pop back into Unity, hopefully this should all stay open and our button should appear whenever it's recompiled. As you can see, yes, our button appears, and if I click it, you can see we get the nice here. So I'm just going to open that. Oops. I'm going to open that and make sure we have our own console window. That's perfect. So brilliant. Okay, so that now we've got the Play ROM. We, hmm, I want to make it so that, okay, we'll, we'll try and set it up so that we'll run. I actually kind of want to have it so that I can save the location of Visual Boy and the actual ROM itself, and I want to plug them in but maybe we'll do them in the next episode. Anyway, let's find out how to run a program. Run a program, oops, using C Sharp. Perfect. Launch an application using .exe, and essentially these guys just use process.start. Using process.start, okay, perfect. That sounds good enough for me, so let's try that here. The using here is, is used for pro, uh, objects that need to be disposed of. And using using here will dispose of the objects themselves. So with this here, because the process is starting, um, basically if I close Unity the all down, this process could still be running. So you want it to be that anything that's going on inside this using statement will be released correctly, just so that it's not leaking memory or whatever. But We'll get into that in a little bit. So what I want is the string file name. So that's just our path to the actual Visual Boy Advance, which is this entire thing here. And we're going to use just path equals this. Now, as you can see, this is trying to escape these uh, letters. Again, we haven't really covered this in the other. We haven't really covered this in our C Sharp series just yet. But if we put an at symbol at the start here, you'll see that all that goes away. And this is just basically a literal string ace. Yes, and I don't really want to get too bogged down into this just yet. Okay, that's how it is. Provide access. Okay, and then if I hopefully go to path. Yeah, okay, perfect. And then it should just replace. Yeah, so now it should run our, well, it'll run our path, but it won't actually run our executable. And the execute blue, I kind of want to put in 
as this. I want to make it its own separate thing, yes. I mean, there's no real reason to do this. You could put it in uh, to there, but I kind of like the idea of just making this, yeah, its own thing here for the moment. So as you can see, we're hard coding in these values, yes, and you don't really want to be doing that there if you can avoid it. So I'll definitely be doing that hopefully in the next episode where we make this, uh, where we make it so that this isn't the case. I'm also going to use Unity spice here just to format this string so that we've got our path and our executable and i also need to put in just an escaped symbol there and that should be us hopefully good enough to go yes i'll just put full path into here of course as well and with any luck this should launch visuals or yes this should launch visual boy advance as soon as we click this play ROM. But we'll see. <laughs> hey, 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 look at that, yes. Perfect. So now we've got it set up. And now I suppose if I click this again, you'll see it'll, it'll load a number of instances of Visual Boy Advance. And we probably don't necessarily want that. We probably want it to actually dispose of the, the other one before it reloads the other one. but. We'll leave it for the now and we'll just make it so that we're actually passing in the arguments that we want. And to do that, we need... So so whenever you launch a program, you can just launch the executable. But you can also pass in arguments to it uh, so that it will do something as well. So usually, so if you're going to launch a program like Microsoft Word, you would usually, as a coder or developer, you would pass the Word file that you want to load with the Word application. So with this case, we're going to use our GBA ROMs path. And we're going to call this, I said we're going to call this, we're just going to use the path to our hacked ROM version, which is this. Perfect. Now, as you can see, hard coding values is never a good idea, is and uh, not really something you ever really want to be doing. But for the moment now, it's, it's usually quick. That's the, that's the nice thing about it. So it'll, it'll allow you to see that you're on the right path. Let's put it that way. And you can come back and refactor or clean it up whenever you're done. And I kind of want to just do that full path again. So GBA full path. Oops. And, oh, for goodness sakes. And, yep. Yep. And, yep. <laughs> Outstanding commentary, yes, for me as always. So GBA ROM path and GBA, oops, GBA ROM name. Just want to bring them both together, yes. It says it being really stupidly long as well. I mean, we probably could have, we probably could have got away with it, but nah, okay. And now we need to pass in the GBA full path as its own argument. So as you can see, we've got a, a nice, a parameter here for arguments so we can just pass in that as is now if you're a stickler for naming conventions you probably could actually put in args here and create a new variable i'm just going to leave it as it is just now and we're going to go and hopefully see this thing work so if i press this yes will it work we will see it didn't it fell on its it fell on its face did i save it i haven't saved it okay okay let's try it again <laughs> Oh, the joys of developing while recording. Right, come on. Developing without a script, yes. Here we go, come on. Oh, unsupported file type, that. Okay, well, that didn't work, which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping it would work. But let's go on to Google, and let's see if we can sort this thing out. Um, advanced executable arguments. Yeah, okay, let's go into that one and we'll have a little look at this one. So this is basically the way you do development is, believe it or not. You, a lot of the time you're actually just trying to, oh, maybe it's because I haven't put in, it could be because I haven't put in my speech marks. I tell you what, I'll try that with speech marks and see how we get on with that is. By the way, putting in doubles for the literal string allows that to actually escape as so it'll just be one speech mark. 
again is we'll go over this in a lot more detail but the moment just i mean even if you just want to copy it down i suppose that will just yeah because i i mean this isn't i mean this is really good development but i, I really don't want to spend too much time on this i just want to make this a little bit okay i just want to make this a little bit more quicker at uh, launching our rom okay but as you can see you can fill the open file type why now it could be that i'm just passing in i tell you what we'll do it just as one big full we'll do it as one big full thing and hopefully that'll just work okay let's try that then so oh i'm in i'm a fool i know what i've done wrong here sorry sorry yes i was meant to put these here so now if we go back and do it and this is what sometimes this is gonna be what development is i mean especially if you're trying something new now i've never tried this before i mean i've got other programs to work but i've never worked with visual boy itself so hopefully it'll just work hey there we are yes oh yeah so that is awesome as you can see now you may think to yourself, you know, I mean, is it really that big a deal having to go in here and, you know, double click on this, go to file, open, you know, double, I mean, is it really that big a deal? Whereas, well, now you can just go like this, yes. You know what I mean? In the time it's taken to load up, I don't know, let's we'll say a game. I've loaded five games there. You can go again, keep going again. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So this is where we're actually using development to our advantage and i kind of want to leave it there i don't really want to go into any more depths with this i wonder if you can actually load see it'd be cool if we could load it in as a save state so we just save even more time where it just goes straight in and we have a big set of save states that we can just load in by the way a save state is just a point in the game where you can well just essentially save everything of the game or whatever save its actual state so as opposed to actually saving a game where we'll load you back maybe at the start of the map or whatever this one will just load you in or save you in position and might even be during a battle if you want um it just makes it a lot more quicker if we're developing i'm going to leave it there is and um yeah so yeah rate comment subscribe yes i hope you're enjoying this series and i'm sorry that we covered quite a lot of stuff today but well fingers crossed you enjoyed it you can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with anything you want to talk about Pokemon, ROM hacking in general. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.